Keegan and Company. It's Keegan and Company, the company you keep. That's it. That's got to be it. Welcome back to the Keegan and Company podcast. For those who are new to the show, my name is Keegan Hipgrave and in this episode, I'm joined by one of the greats, former captain of the Brisbane Broncos and current founder and owner of Legacy Through Movement, Jim Alex Glenn. How are you, brother? Hey, Keegs. I'm good, brother. Thanks for having me along. Mate, thanks for coming. The... Mate, the best thing that I love about you is like you're a busy man. Like you've got the, obviously the legacy gym. You're still doing stuff with the Bronx mm-hmm. and you've still got time to go drop your kids off at school. Like yeah. that's it. Like, we're, we're, we're pushing time a little bit, but bro, how good? Yeah, bro. It's um, I, like I was saying to you before, it's one of those things that we as players, we missed out on a lot, um, you know, being around, being present with our kids. And so I pride myself on taking my kids and picking them up from school. And um, I'm that dad that's hanging out with all the mums. Yeah. Up their kids. <laughs> You're the dad with the singlet on and yeah, coming in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah, so that was cool. How um how are you finding work life balance now? Because we've had some great sessions in at Legacy lately. We had Connie mm-hmm. Harrell in there the other day. Yep. Um, we've had a few of the boys in there. How are you finding the balance between Bronx, gym, kids, family, the whole the whole thing? Bro, it's honestly probably the hardest part. Yep. Is like trying to manage my time. Yeah. Um, Because when you're in footy, you get told where to be, what to wear, you know, what you need to be doing and how long you're doing your sessions for. Whereas now I've got to do that all on my own. Um, So like the hardest part is obviously managing so many different calendars because I got my my um, youth work that I do with the kids at with through the Broncos and our multicultural leadership program. Um, So balancing my workload schedule with them. And then obviously running my own gym with Jeremiah and trying to balance being in there. It's yeah. it's, it's hard, it's bro, wild, but eh? it's been a learning process that I've really enjoyed. And um, this is my second year out of the game now. So I'm gradually, I'd like to think I'm getting better with it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just a constant roller coaster, man. Mate, that's the thing in footy. Like I swear a lot of the boys, especially when we were in it, it's like we've got no time. Like, you know, we're away from our family so mm. much, especially like, Bronx, they were playing mostly Friday yeah. nights. So you got yeah. your weekend. We lucky. <laughs> yeah, we lucky. But like, there were so many times, even talking to guys now, they're like, I've got no time. Yeah. And I'm like, mate, imagine when you leave and then you've got to do, you've got kids, you've got to work nine to five. Like that was the biggest yeah. thing I, same as you, struggled yep. with coming out. And then you want, you still want to train. Mm-hmm. You still want to train. You still want to be a good dad. You still want to do it. It's fucking tough. Yeah. It is tough, bro. It is tough. But, um, you know, one of those things, you're exactly right. When we were playing footy, I thought I never had time 100%. to do anything. Yeah. Um, because it was always your purpose was to play footy. Yeah. Your purpose was to perform the best you can. And then you're trying to fit in family time and that. But now we've transitioned out of the game and into business and into life. Um, I realized, man, we had so much time yeah, as players, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like we used to complain about literally being overworked. And yeah. it was like, far out. Yeah. We, we were living the life. Um, but the thing that I love now is like I, I've got my own business. So me punching in as many hours as I can doesn't feel like work. Yeah. And I'm working in a gym. Um, again, it's something that I love. Mm. We love exercise. We yeah. still do exercise as much as we can. And um, it doesn't feel like work, man. And uh, finding that balance has been a beautiful thing. What's um, what's training looking like for you now? You just jump. Were you jumping with the boys? You obviously jump in with the boys at Legacy and the boys are coming through left, right and center, yeah? Yeah, bro. So whenever the boys come through, like yourself and Connie come through, I'll jump in and train with you guys just yeah. to try and create a more comfortable environment for the boys. Mm. Um, but generally, if I can, I'll try and get up with um jeremiah um, my business partner he trains at 3 30 in the morning what? every morning yeah. bro. like he he is built different in terms of routine and that man yeah and he is in there every day really every so day he'll, so, so he'll sesh before the 6 a.m 5 a.m 5 a.m class yeah. starts so yeah. he'll get his workout done before the 5 a.m and then get into work with the with the class and all that stuff so you, and you're jumping in sometime not all the time <laughs> yeah, yeah, not all the time oh yeah if i've got to go on the road yeah. and i've got a big day then i'll jump in and get my workout done because mm. i like to do it in the morning like i don't have yeah. time in the afternoon 100%. i've got three kids that are heavily involved in sports and dancing mm. and all that so i try and be more present as a as much as I can with the kids. But you also feel better. Like, I don't know, for me, like, I feel better after doing a session for the Always. day. Like, you get the hardest thing done throughout the day and then you can yep. not cruise for the rest of the day, but you feel yep. like you don't have to get it done later on, yeah? Yeah, for sure. So, like, when we train at five, like, I'll mostly train at five in the morning. Yeah. 
um, with with the class or, or on my own. Um, and I feel like my energy throughout the day is much more. 100%. Like I have much more compared yeah. to if I slept in till seven yeah. or eight. I feel so lethargic, you yeah. know what I mean? So it's one of those things that's like, I've got to try and get my workout in in the morning yeah. so then I'm more productive throughout the day. I used to um, I used to watch the stories of, obviously your story, but also Nathan Pastramo's story, a good Starmie. friend good friend yep. of mine. Yep. And it'd be like, whoever's not in the gym at 3.30, he'd be like, oh, where's our bro? Like, not here today. It's you know? that accountability, right? Accountability. You've got to keep each other accountable. You've got to have that banter. And that's why I love that crew, man. Yeah. We got that, it's like that footy team environment. Um, because when we're at footy, we just f constantly throw banter at each other, and that's yeah. the exact same thing. We call it the Dawnies crew. Yeah. Um, so we're we're up at in, in the crack of dawn, and we just have that banter and um, rivalry between each other to push each other and, and keep each other accountable. Is that why? Is that one of the biggest reasons you created Legacy? Is just to have like replicate the footy culture because so many boys struggle coming out of footy yeah. yeah like they're training by themselves and they miss having the community and getting around it. is that probably i don't want to put words yeah. in your mouth but is that why one of the it's 100 percent one of the main reasons the thing why i did that was i always wanted to have my own gym yeah um and this is nothing against any other gym than public gym but i just hate public gyms mm. bro I find there's too much ego in there. Yeah. Um, there's too much, you know, intimidation. And mm -hmm. I was like, I want to create a space where people can come and, you know, feel validated, feel in a safe space where they can work out um, and be at different phases in their life, whether they're just starting out for the first time or yeah. their experience levels. And I wanted to create this concept through legacy um, that you can train as an athlete. Mm. You know, every every uh, workout that we do, and this is credit to Jeremiah and the team, they do all the programming, but they try and um, do a workout where it's going to help you in your everyday life. Yes. So you can function um, the best way your body can. You know what I mean? You're not limited to um, your age and, and your injury problems. You know, they want to try and fix you so that holistically, you're the best version of yourself. And Training has always been this concept of like it helped me not physically but mentally. Yes, and that's what I wanted to teach to the general population. So you know I'm a small part of what we do at Legacy, but I got to give full credit to my whole team, um, Jeremiah and all my staff that are in there because they create that environment. Like I'm not there every day, but my staff are. Mate, that was my favorite thing coming into Legacy. Mm. Like when we roll in, you're like very generous, allowing me to bring a few of the boys in who might be traveling from Sydney mm. or Melbourne or wherever it is, and coming in there. You just feel welcome. Like seeing like see, like seeing Jerry, seeing you, like seeing um Shane yep, as well. Shane like o. the boys are just so welcome. They're like, How are you? And they're like, Jerry's like, I love your energy. I was like, man, I love your energy. And so I walk away feeling like I having done a solid workout. Like I was, yeah. I was cooked the other There's day. There's some tough ones, but bro. There are some, there tough, are some ones. tough ones. And then um <laughs> even watching Connie, like <laughs> when we were doing some push-ups, he looked up at me, he's like, Oh my god, bro. <laughs> But I walked like obviously a hard session, but mate, I walked away with like so much energy yeah. after a gym session. You feel I feel good, like, right? And you feel good. And like I think I love the community that you've created because it's like you said, like we obviously a lot of, see a lot of the boys in yeah. there. Like you see yeah. AJ comes in there all the time, yeah. like especially in off season, yeah. right? And then yeah. you've also got boys and girls who aren't athletes, but you can accommodate it to everyone, which is yeah. so cool. Yeah. And we we've been so blessed. L L our main aim was to have a very diverse crew come yeah. through and, um, you know, just seeing them really get their confidence within themselves and come out of their shell and mix and mingle with so many different people. Like, yeah. it's been amazing. And again, I can't give enough credit to my staff because mm. they create the environment. When you walk in, there's, there'll be moments where... Um, before the staff go through the workout, they yeah. can feel like they need to pick their energy up. Yep. So they will do a thing where you got to go meet two people that you don't know. We here. did that the other day. Yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you got to go meet them and have a chat to them, and it just breaks that ice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then you don't stay in your little nook. Stay within your own crew mm. that you know, man. And when you go around, you walk away with with a couple of new friends, man. Do you think about? Before you started, like before you started, do you think about values at all? Like, or like core principles that you like, I imagine community is one of them. Mm -hmm. But did you think about that before you started gym? All the time. Yeah. All the time. We had um, a lot of meetings around uh, what's our core values and legacy. Yeah. And what do we stand for? Yeah. Um, and community wasn't huge. Yeah. Huge. Um, respect was another. Yes. You know, um, and values is a huge point of like, um, 
or a huge thing in my life. Yeah. Um, you know, my three values is hard work, discipline, sacrifice, and mm. that's been embedded, indebted in me since I was a young age. Um, and it's still indebted in me and, and what I do every single day. So we had to come up with what's legacy's values. What do we stand for? So that when the new faces come in, they know what we're all about. Mm. And we got to live up to those values, but also it keeps us accountable to our standards. Yeah. What are we applying and what are we providing our services to the, the fam? When they walk out of there, we want them to feel that. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's, it was the first thing that we, we discussed about what's our DNA at Legacy Through Movement. And, um, you know, when I hear people like yourself that come in, yeah. you feel welcome. Yeah, yeah. Um, you feel like um, you're a part of a team, even yeah. though you only pop in one or two times, man. Yeah. You, you walk away with that feeling like, man, I want to come back. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's what I wanted to provide. Mate, it's so cool. Hardworking, dedication, sacrifice. sacrifice. Where, do you, where does that come from? Because you said you've that, that's been a core for you for a while mm -hmm. growing up. Where does that come from? Is that friends, family, people you're leaning on? Like how, yeah. do, you, how do you come up with those things? Because I imagine a lot of people are like, you know, what? yeah, like I want to start like drilling down, maybe even reflecting on yep. what I want to do for my kids or what I want to do in my community or my friends. How yeah. do you pick them? Yeah, bro. So for me, it was um, my upbringing. Yeah. So a lot to do with my upbringing. Like I was surrounded um, through gang violence, drug, alcohol, you know, not in my own family. Alcohol was huge in my family. Yeah. Not so much drugs, but it was surrounded by us. And Did you grew up on the Goldie? Or were you, nah, you're I was in New Zealand. Zealand. Yeah, you're in um, Zealand. I grew up in a place called Beach Haven in, yeah. in Auckland. Okay. And, um, it's a rough neighborhood, but it's... It's a place that I'm very grateful that I grew up in. I still call it home. Yep. I still represent where I come from. Yep. Um, moved over here when I was 14. Okay. Um, and the reason why we moved is mum wanted to create more opportunities for us kids. Yep. Wanted to break um, the cycle of yes. what we what we grew up in. Mm. And she was like, you know what? I want more for, for my kids. So we moved to the Gold Coast, moved straight to Burley, man. God's Jeez, country, you, mate, brother. You did so well coming in here. I went brother. from, you know, living, living in the hood yeah. to... Living in paradise, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it's just two, two um, amazing places, bro. And like the lifestyle here is, is absolutely amazing. I grew up, I went to Miami High School and. Is that I what you learned to surf, brother? That's what I learned to surf, Is that what you were surfing, yeah, brother? Yeah, that's yeah. right. It's those double sessions of PE, man. <laughs> yeah. We walked down to the beach. PVC were the same. Bro, I thought you would have gone to Palmy. Well, the reason mom, why mum put me at Miami was because she knew I loved footy. Yes. And she goes, if I put you there, or Kibra, yeah. you want to like focus on your education. Fair. It didn't work because my education was still terrible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that, bro. Oh man, but yeah. um, literally, yes, yeah, that's the reason. I only found out there was footy schools um at year eleven. Okay. You know what I mean? So I did four years in in high school, bro, and I was like, or three years in high school, and I was like, why am I not going there? Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, but it was cool. I was grateful for the journey, man. Mm. Everything happens for a reason. 100%. Um, I talked to Kurt Richards all the time and he was like, you scathed under the radar. Like none of us knew of you yeah. until I turned 18 and I started playing cut for Burley. Yeah. Um, and then my journey just skyrocketed from there. Did you always think that you were going to play footy growing up? Was that, uh, was that, that was a dream. A that was a dream. That was a dream of yeah. mine. I think um, when I was eight years old, I was at my primary school and I only knew this because I went back. Every time I go home, I go back to the schools that I went to and I try and do a talk with the youth and try and um, inspire those kids that they can achieve whatever they want to achieve. I come from the same upbringings, mm. same neighborhood, and I made it. Mm. So you can do it too. And I seen my old primary school teacher that was yeah. still there, Mrs. Hunt. Yeah. And she goes, do you know what your, your dream was? And I was like, what's that? She goes, to be a professional footy player. And really? I was like, are you kidding? She had the piece of paper, man. Yeah, still. Pulled it out. And I was like, wow, I couldn't believe it, bro. Yeah. Um, and so I fulfilled this dream, man. But as I got older, you realize, okay, the reality of it is very slim. So small. You know what I mean? Yeah. Very slim. And it wasn't until I graduated from high school because I was that guy that always wanted to be the cool guy. Um, and, you know, I failed English because I didn't want to go up and do speeches because I was petrified of looking like an idiot in front of my mates. Yeah. Something so small back then was like actually huge in my eyes because, yeah, that fear of, you know, looking like, a, like an idiot. So when I graduated from high school, I was like, what do I do now? Mm. You know, like there's no career for me being a cool guy. 
You know, I had to go into the real world and get a job. And all my mates went to TAFE. They went to um, university or they already had a job lined up. Mm. So they were like succeeding as it is. And I was living at home in a two bedroom house with my mom, my my younger siblings. You know, I was sharing a single bed. You know what I mean? I was like, I'm nearly 18 years, years old. What am I doing with myself? So I had a low point in my life where I was like, I nearly, I really need to pull my my head in and start doing something for myself, and that's where I started to focus on my goals and my values. When you were when you were coming through, was there a lot of younger players that were aligned with the Broncos or aligned with? You talked about Kurt Richards. He was a um, a scout or a. Um, yep. Uh, who's with the at the time, he was with Keeper Park. Oh, really? Yeah. Before Bronx? He was coaching at okay. Keeper Park. But was, was there young crew that were going on and doing like, I'm guessing under 20s with the Bronx or under 20s with the Titans? Were you involved in that at all? Not really because I gave up footy for three years. Did you so really? So I was like fully out of the, the bubble and the circle, man. Really? Um, the, the main reason why I did was um, because I had back problems. Yeah. And a chiropractor said that like my spine's – not bending the right way, yeah. if that makes sense. And he said, one bad tackle, you could be in a in a wheelchair. And that hit home, bro. I was 16 years old. And I was like, footy is everything for me right now. And he goes, mate, you got to weigh it up. Priorities. You got to weigh it up. Priorities. And I walked out of the um, the meeting. I bored my eyes to mum. And she was like, what do you want to do? And I was like, I'm not going to put that stress on my family. You yeah. know what I mean? If that did happen. So I gave up footy, man, for three years, bro. Did, was that footy forever did you think you were going to come Pretty back much, to it or is it just nah. like let me have three years get back to it and then i'll reassess yeah it's it was kind of one of those things we got away oh we got to monitor it over time okay so in my head i was like that's me footy's gone um and how i got through that was he said to me to take up surfing really the reason um was that was when you your posture when you're paddling yeah you know what i mean it was going to help um my my alignment and my spine so that's why I jumped into surfing. Like I always bodyboard back yeah, yeah. in the day. Yeah. Um, so then I got into surfing after that, did that for or well, ever since I was 16. And um, I still played touch heavily because mm. I was that competitive person, yeah. you know what I mean? So if I can't do contact, touch is the closest thing. I imagine like growing up, wanting to be a professional footy player and then mm. at 16 being like, mate, you're, you're done. Bro, shattered. That would have been so hard. Shattered. Especially at that time because you're young, mm. you're obviously such a competitive person. Like that would have been everything. Yeah? Everything. And all my mates, bro, they were playing footy, man. You know what I mean? It was everything I knew. Um, so yeah, I was, I was that guy walking around kicking stones, man, going, why me? Yeah. Why me? Um, blaming everyone else and all this stuff. But, um, it was, like I said, things happen for a reason in life. And uh, I was blessed that, um, that episode come through my life. Cause it actually helped me later on in my career. Mm. Cause when I came into the professional scene, my body was like, you know, uh, a version in the professional world. Yeah. You know, I was learning everything for the first time. I was learning how to um, grow my body, get the best out of my body. So I was like this six-year-old kid learning a skill for the first time. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I excelled really quickly because I was just like a sponge man, just mm. soaking and absorbing everything up. So I look at my career and I, I honestly think that because I started so late, it allowed me to play on longer than longer. I should have. Yeah. What, what changed when you hit 18? You said that you were living at your parents' place. You were sharing a one, one, bed, yeah. one, one yeah, bedroom yeah. room. What changed? Like how, how did you kickstart into being with My the My mindset, Bronx? bro. Yeah. My mindset. So how it started, bro, we're at schoolies. When schoolies <laughs> was huge back yeah. in the day, right? And yeah. it's where everyone goes and celebrates graduating from high school for a whole week. And um, the boys that I was staying with in the unit, they had preseason training. Mm. So they had to go train Tuesday and Thursday. And I was like, what am I going to do? Yeah. I'm not going to sit here by myself. <laughs> I'm going to drink by myself. Yeah, yeah legit. Yeah. And I was like, fuck. And they go, you should, you should come train. And I was like, you know what? Stuff it. I'll come have a little run with the boys. Um, absolutely loved it, bro. Mm. I loved it. Being around the boys, throwing yeah. banter, I was like, I could get used to this. Um, so I went Thursday, mm. trained with them Thursday, and then the coach was like, why don't you just do preseason? Um, go get all your scans that you need to, get the clearance, yeah. um, and then go from there. So got the clearance, did preseason, and um, we ended up having like an opposed match against Queensland Cup. Yeah. 
and I was coming up against um, Liam Capewell, which is Curdy Capewell's Curdy's older brother. brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and because I was playing centre at the time, and I was I was trying to learn the basics again and and structures and stuff, and um, I ended up having a pretty good you know match against them yeah. and jimmy lenahan who's with the titans now old assistant yeah he's, he was our coach he rang me up after that session and said i want you to come and do preseason with cup and i said to him i go mate this is literally a couple of weeks being back in like footy i need to learn the basics again he goes yep we'll do that with the men and i was like all right sweet, sweet. so i was pretty nervous man like 18 year old I was raining at best maybe 89, 90 Rip, kilos, yeah. but like skinny. <laughs> My, boy. Bro, like I've come from touch, man. Yeah. So it's a different build, you know? Like I was very lean. Um, so I had to learn how to, to work out, get in the gym, bulk up. And those boys were absolutely amazing for me. I had um, Stacey Katu, who was a big mentor for me when I come into that team, who played for the Rabbitohs. Um, and then I had a Ziri Lang, who's like a Burley Bears great. Yeah. Um, he was my winger, so like anyone that picked on me on the field, he would <laughs> yeah, he would sort them out. Yeah. Um, so like coming through preseason with with the Queensland Cup team was absolutely amazing. It allowed me to grow um, within myself. I played the three trials at centre, and then ended up um, making my debut round one with the Cup side, mm. um, which was huge, huge because I went from not playing at all to playing with my mates, to now I'm versing men mm. that have played first grade before. So I was learning so much. Um, and then you fast forward six months later, um, I had offers from Titans, obviously, yeah. Selves, Sharkies, um, and then the Bronx come through. That's gonna give you so much confidence, hey? Huge. Like you've, you've got the evidence now, you're like, I've worked hard, yep. I've soaked up all this knowledge from like being in the Q Cup system, yep. and now you're getting offers. That confidence gotta be huge, yeah? It was huge, man, but at the same time, you know, my values, I put in the hard work. Yes. I was sacrificing going out, partying with my mates at a prime age yeah. um, and making sure that I was getting my sleep in so that I could train Saturday morning, Sunday morning. You know what I mean? Because I knew in my head, um, there's only 1% that make it. Mm. So out of these 100 people, what am I doing different to, to give myself an, op an opportunity? Yeah. And so that's where sacrifice came in. I was sacrificing my teenage years to go out and party, um, to sleep in and get my workout and get it done so that when I come to training or when I come to games, I was able to perform the best that I could, man. I imagine there's so many young boys in that exact situation who are probably sitting there listening to this in school, like, how do I get to do that? Because when you're in school, you're almost like, it's so far away. Mm. Like it's so, but when you're 17, you might only be a couple years out of being in an under 21 system, 100%. potentially even a... NRL preseason, you know yep. what I mean? Like, and f just to know, like, not getting on the pierce, like yep. getting away, not getting away from those friendship circles, but being in positive groups, like legacy gym, for example, yep. and knowing that, like, yeah, put in the work, put yep. in the sacrifice and like, look at the career you've had and all the yep. success you've had on the back of that. I mm. imagine that would be huge for young boys. Yeah, bro. For, and at, girls. for, yeah, for anyone that's coming through, man, it's, it's about, Aligning yourself with what's my purpose? Yeah. You know, what do I stand for? What's my what's my goals? Mm. What do I want to achieve? And for me at that age, my goals and my purpose was much higher than going out to a party. Priorities. You know what I mean? Like I said, I was always that guy trying to please others and be that cool guy. Mm. But for once I put myself first and I was like, you know what? Mum created an opportunity for us here. So why the hell am I gonna waste it? Mm. You know what I mean? I've got all these opportunities, I've got all these possibilities that I can create for myself. I've got to be willing to do it. I've got to be, be willing to sacrifice everything for it. So that always outweighed, mm. you know, when you get that rubber arm, I was like, nah, yeah. nah. The bigger picture is far, far much more, more better. And um, I had mates that were in the same boat as me, but they went to the parties yeah. instead of sleeping in, you know, or sleeping and getting that workout in. And once I made it, and I, I became an NRL figure. They, were, they would come up to me and they're like, I really wish I just followed your footsteps. You yeah. know what I mean? Mm. So it comes down to, if you're at that age, it just comes down to what are your goals mm. and what's your purpose? You said you had a lot of offers from other clubs, Titans, Rabbits, Bronx. Why'd you pick Bronx? The history. Yeah, bro. The history. Um, because I was such, I was a, I've only been playing for six months again. Mm. So I I wanted to go to a club that was going to teach me 
how to be the best player I can and how to be a good person, man. And at the time, Wayne Bennett was a coach. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, he was the guru in terms of footy coaches and, and understanding rugby league. And back then, too, we had Darren Lockyer, Corey Parker, Petro Simonasiva, you know, Sam Thide, the greats, man. Yeah. The greats. And I was like, what better club to go and learn the game mm. from these legends that pretty much make up Queensland and Australia. You you walk in and like the Queensland forward pack is the Brisbane Broncos right. forward pack, yeah? Legit, man. You got the Queensland captain and the Australian captain at the Broncos. Mm. So like, why not go there? Yeah. And that soon as I got that call from Wayne Bennett, funny story, man. He rang me. I was painting houses at yeah. the time, right? Yeah. And this unknown number comes through and I picked it up. I was like, hello, Alex Beginner. He goes, Alex, it's Wayne Bennett here. And at the time, right, at the time, I was getting um, contacted from the other clubs. Mm. So I thought, the boys are taking the piss yeah, here. Oh, really? The boys are taking the piss here. And yeah. I, my exact words to him was like, fuck off. And yeah. I hung up. <laughs> I hung up you on hung Wayne, up. bro. And I was like, at the time, I was like, good one, boys. Put my phone down. It rang straight back. And he goes, now nah, before you hang up, it's, it's Wayne Bennett from the Brisbane Broncos. And I started to like listen to his voice and I went, holy <laughs> shit. And I was looking at my work, man. He goes, what's going on? And I was like, I'm so sorry, bro. And I like started to get real <laughs> nervous and backpedal, bro. And I was just like, damn. I was like, I, this, and I, I explained why I did it. Yeah. And he had a laugh, man. And he goes, no, nah, I want to I wanna catch up with you. I've seen yeah. a couple of your games. Um, I want to come down and meet you. And I was like, yeah, that'd be amazing. So the next week, he drove down with um, Andrew G and Ivan Henjak. Yeah. And we met up at mum's work. And I was like, well, this is a reality. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and I was covered in paint from work and all this stuff. And he walked out of that room, pretty much got my contract and sent it through that afternoon. Wow. And I was like, I'm, I'm going. This is where I want to go. And the reason why I did it, not just because of the club's history and all that, but... These words that he said to me lived with me still to this day. And he goes, when you come to the Broncos, I want to make you a great football player, but I want to turn you into a better human being when you leave the doors. Yeah. And I was like, that's what my values are all about. Mm. Be a good person. Things will come your way if you put the work into it. You know what I mean? And I wanted to be a football player. But at the same time, I wanted to be mentored by someone that understands people, understands life. Mate, Wayne got it better than anyone in terms of people, hey. Mm. Like, that's why, like, my <clears> – <throat> that's how we can, we connected. We met, yep. we met at, the, at the Bronx. Yeah. And my mum is a huge fan of Wayne Bennett. Like, read all yep. – like, read his book, like, did all that. And for that exact reason, because he's got mm. so much love for his players. He wants them to be better people. And, yep. he's, and he's not scared to take on someone who – might be struggling yeah, off the, off or the have, field or, or make mistakes make in life, mistakes, bro. And he'll pull them and he'll get them in and he'll get the best out of them 100%. all the time. Yeah. You know why he does that, bro? Or like why he gets the best out of them? Because he cares, man. Yeah. He doesn't care about you as a football player. He cares about Keegan, the person, mm. you know? And um, that's why it brings out the best. When you – and that's why I try and do it at our gym, man. Yeah. When you showcase, um, you know, that you care about the person's life, you have – um, intent and like you actually listen to them bro mm. it does wonders for for everyone you know what i mean when you have um genuine care about someone bro it will always bring out the best yeah um so whenever you try and pass on knowledge or advice man they're gonna listen too they're not just like oh he's just putting on this this for face sure. man yeah. and um that's what wayne does bro that's why he's the goat and you can see it. Like, you you know who's genuine and who's not genuine. Yeah. Mm. Like, that was the coolest thing coming into the Bronx. Like, as a 17-year-old, when I yeah. when I first came in there, I saw, like, yourself. Um, and there was a sick crew in there. Like, Bro, it was cool. Uh, Andrew McCulloch, um, Joffa, um, yeah. Benny Han, um, Reedy was in yeah, there. Reedy, like, Cosa, Thiday, Jillo. Like, these are guys, like, yourself included. Guys who I looked up to playing yeah. as a kid. And I'm sure that's when you guy. came into, it was the mm. exact same. But the energy that's in there, it's just like... It's so it, genuine. It just makes you want to be better, right? It makes you want to be better. But what I was angling at is like, yeah, you talk about like Wayne being a good person and caring about people, but that's you, bro. Like ever since I came in, I look at you as someone who is incredibly caring and who actually genuinely cares about the young boys coming through. Yeah, wow. Like you don't have to 
go out of your way to do extras with the young boys. You don't have to go out of your way to be like, let's go get a coffee or let's go have a beer at my place. Like you don't have to do that, mm. but you do do it and Thank you do it because you care. And that's why, that's why, mate, I've got so much respect for you and I've got so much love for you now. Thank was you. from way back like eight, nine years ago. Yeah, you know what I mean? Right. Thank you, bro. It means the world to me, man. Um, you know, like I said, it's it's about being a good human being, bro. Mm. Um, because I've, I've also been in that, in the shoes where you first come into a club, it's intimidating, it's right? Scary, eh? It's scary, bro. You're like, man, I'm I'm fresh out of school. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm coming into a system where they're superstars. Mm. So like, I I remember sitting in a corner, just going, like, I'm gonna stay in my space. Yeah. Um, and then it come a point where I was like, you know what? What I'm here for a reason. Yeah. You know, I I may as well get the most out of it, bro. So I just started, you know forming that relationship with Lockie and Peter yeah. Wallace because I was a back rower at the time. So I knew if our combinations are tight, mm. it's going to reflect on the field, man. So um, it helped when they offered to come out, like, come have coffee with us. And I was yeah. like, yep, I was jumping straight onto it. You'll say yes to everything. Yeah, 100%. Because yeah. I was like, you know what? It's an opportunity that, you know, not many people get to have, but also it's going to allow me to understand who they are as a, as mm. a person too. So... Like I said, I was a sponge soaking up everything that these legends did for me. Mm. So I try to reciprocate that when the young boys come through like yourself and try to make it like we do at Legacy, try yeah. to make it like that friendly, homely yeah. environment where you feel um, in a safe space. Patty and I had this exact conversation when we did our podcast. Like mm. we're talking about coming in as like an eight, 17, 18, 19 year old kid. Yep. And you're so scared to like yeah. speak in front of the boys. Cause these are guys who you've looked up to since you were a little kid. Yeah. Yep. And like the, I think, um, Corey Parker made his debut when I was like two years old. <laughs> two, or bro, two or three years old, bro. And I was, I'm like, I think, because he was 18, obviously debuted young and then he, he played forever. Yeah. And, and he was playing good footy for a long time. Yeah. And he's someone like him and Sam Thada, you know, when you like, you do the walk around the Bronx and like, they'll show you the, they show you like the facilities. I remember yeah. walking in and this is when um, like the game analyzer just started yep. kicking off. And so you could type in the player's name yep. and it'll pull up all their runs, all their yep. tackles, all their missed tackles, everything. And they're like, who do you, like, who do you want to put in? I was just like, oh, maybe Sam Thurday, maybe Corey Parker. Like yeah, a young yeah, kid. Yeah, yeah, and now you come in and like you get to, and then you get to meet them. Yeah. But you're scared and you're like a little bit nervous. Like I reckon at Bronx, like the first year, I didn't say, I don't think I said a word. Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then the best thing Patty said was like, because it, it kind of like affects your footy a little bit because you don't want to make mistakes. You don't want to drop the ball. Probably sure. wasn't ball playing as much as like For what sure. we were used to. But then as soon as you start becoming yourself, you start feeling comfortable around the boys, you can knock around with each other. That's mm. when the real, like the cool stuff really yeah, happens. Yeah, 100%. Know? And it, it's, I think it's a, a thing for everyone to understand that you have um, strengths that can provide value to a work environment that you're at or mm. a team environment and you got to play to your strengths, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? A lot of the kids, and we say it to them when they debut, man, like don't go in your shell. Yes. Play your game. You know what I mean? You're in this team for, for a reason. So don't look to the senior players to do something when you're more than capable to do it. You're there for a reason. hundred percent. Yeah. Um, and once you start to get that concept in your mind, bro, you really start to come out of your shell and you start to perform. And mm. when you start to perform, the team is stoked, bro. Yeah. You see all the boys come around you. They're like, hell yeah. And they yeah. pump you up and you're like, man, this feels good. And you want to keep doing it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But it's breaking down that eye, uh, that ice because you have so much respect for all these players. Mm. You don't want to be like, am I stepping on his toes or yeah. whatnot? Or like, why am I telling him what to run and stuff? You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, bro, just get out there and give it a crack. Brother, you played, played 14 years. 14 in the years, man. 14 years. Crazy. Fourth most capped Bronco, yeah. that's got to be special, yeah? Huge, bro. Huge. I want to talk about, because obviously, mate, you've you've done more than most in the game. Like, it, it's, it's it's incredible to look, to have someone, like, very privileged to be able to sit here. I'm very, I'm very happy about this, mate. Brother. I'm honoured to be <laughs> like, here, I appreciate bro. that. But is there a moment in that 14-year career which stands out as a, the most memorable moment? Or is there a couple that you sort of look back and you know, you know what, that was special? Yeah, there's there's a few, man. And obviously the debuts, yes. one that a lot of us will say. Mm. Um, the reason why I say that is because all the hard work and, and, and the sacrifices my parents made for me and the journey to get to that moment, um, it felt like it was all worth it. Yeah. Um, so that that's a, definitely a special one. And 
Um, you know, I had family flow from New Zealand for it. It was at um, Suncorp round one against the Cowboys, 55,000 yeah. people, you know what I mean? So wow. that was a special one. Um, another one was when I first capped in the Bronx when I was 22 years old. But see that I didn't know about this until recently because obviously everyone knows that you finished captain. Yeah. But you got this captain at 22 years 22, old. 22, which is wild. It was my third year in the game. That's what I mean. Um, and at the time it was Anthony Griffin, which was our under 20s coach, mm. and he 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 made me captain. I don't know why, mm. um, because we had Peter Wallace that was still there, um, Nick Kinney that was still there, and this was um, when all our Origin stars went into camp. Yeah. Um, and he was like, "I'm going to make you captain." And I was like. <laughs> What do you mean? Yeah. Like, this is my third year. I, I'm still trying to learn the game. Yeah. Um, and he, he just said he seen me as a future captain and all this stuff. And I don't, I've never been one to get a big head or anything. I just felt uncomfortable being the captain. So throughout that week, man, the boys were so supportive. They were pumped for me. Um, and, you know, before captain's run, I rang Lockie, man. And I was like, I don't Darren know. Darren right? yeah. yeah. I rang Darren Lockie in camp and I was like, man, I'm petrified. I don't know what to do. I don't know how to lead these boys. And again, another advice that he uh, he said to me that sat with me throughout my whole career was, he said, Lexi, you don't have to give up a pump, a pump up speech for the boys. All you need to do is go out there and lead through your actions and the boys will follow. Mm -hmm. um, and that's always been something that I try and do in my day-to-day -day life is lead through actions. Because everyone can talk. Everyone can say the right things, yeah. right? Um, and as soon as he said that, Like, it was calm, bro. Yeah. Um, so that was another highlight. But then um, a huge one was um, the 215 grand final. Yeah. We weren't victorious. Yeah. But that year and that team that we had, bro, it was just like an unbelievable experience. Mm -hmm. um, and to play in the NRL grand final, it was just one of the best experiences I had. It would have been nice to have the ring at mm -hmm. the end of the day, but to be privileged to play – And the all Queensland GF special um, was unbelievable, bro. Unbelievable. Um, and it's something that I cherish. I still haven't watched the game, but it's something that I cherish to be a part of. Why haven't you watched the game? Can't, man. I'm a really? sore loser like really? that, bro. Really? Massive sore loser. Yeah, wow. Well. And it just, because um, then I start to play out scenarios in my head like, oh, all, all we had to do was do this, yeah. or what if I did this? Then the, the results. But. Hindsight's a beautiful thing. Yeah, bro, 100%, yeah. man. Yeah. And like I said, things happen for a reason. Mm. Um, Antonio Winnerstein's one of my best mates. He was in the Cowboys team. Yeah. Earlier that year, he lost his, his younger brother to suicide. Wow. You know what I mean? So that kind of, you know, solidified him winning. Was It was meant to be, bro. Yeah. Like he dedicated his, his season to his brother. Mm. Um, I was there with him when we were mourning about the whole thing. So... It was a thing, it never made it easier, but it was a thing like, you know what, there's a purpose behind it yeah. and he deserves it more than I did. Mate, this is this is obviously a mental health and mm. sport podcast and mm. I look at you as someone who's been an advocate for mental health It's the whole time I've known you, right? Like Thank you're an ambassador you. for living, you've been, yeah. you've been very vocal on behalf of NRL players on mental health. I look at people who are advocates in the mental health space and I think a lot of the times they've either struggled with mental health themselves or they've had friends and families, people who are close to them who have struggled with mental health. What is it for you that makes you want to be such an advocate for mental health? Like, where does that come from? Yeah, um, you know, obviously Dwayne Lally, um, you know, one of our close mates, um, reason why living started, mm. um, he took his own life. And at the time, he was everything we all wanted to be. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he was a Golden Glove boxer, Australian boxer, um, you know, just whenever we seen him at parties and all this stuff like he was just living the life man mm. and he was the vibe bro and every time we walked away i was like i want to be like him yeah but little did we know behind closed doors he was facing demons that we never knew about mm. um and one of his best mates casey lyons who's one of my good friends um what's it they were drinking and then he went missing mm. and he was like bro i'm, I'm worried about him And, um, you know, long story short, man, we ended up, you know, finding him and he lost his battle to depression. Um, and we didn't know how to deal with it mm. at that time. And the more that we spoke to each other about what we were going through, we felt like a weight was getting lifted off our shoulders. Okay. So we needed to do something about it. And over the years, man, throughout my career, we had Antonio's brother pass away. I had some of my mates take their own lives. I had families and all that stuff. And I was like, 
we need to do more. Mm. And in my, I guess, my stage that I was on, I wanted to express vulnerability through social media, through interviews and all that, because I wanted people to know that we are just human like you guys mm. are. We go through struggles just like you do. Um, I had my own mental battles, mm. you know what I mean? Um, through through family. Um, and at the time when I was, I was the Brisbane Broncos captain, like it was the hardest time of my life not because of footy yeah but because you know i i was having family dramas with my mom yeah. at the time um and mom raised us sing like she was a single parent that raised me my brother and sister so she worked multiple jobs so i had all this respect for her mm. um and we just had these differences you know what i mean that just overcome in time that I didn't really understand. What, I was like, what do you mean? Are you, are you, are you, I don't No, no, like no, no. It's, it's bro, about. like I've, I've spoken about it a lot, man. And, you know, it was, it was just, in a way, I felt, you know, like my mom was going through some struggles herself. Yeah. And whenever I tried to help her, it was shoved back in my face. Mm. You know what I mean? And seen as disrespect. Um, and we come from, from a very proud family where you respect your elders. So, in a way, she felt like I wasn't respecting her mm. when re I was just trying to help. Doing well, what's best for her, right? Trying to do what's best for her. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, it just, I guess, it got spat in my face to a point where she started taking it out on on um, my baby mama and, and, and the wife of, of, you know, my my kids and all that stuff. And it come to a point where I was like, i got to protect my own family here. Mm. You know, this is my family. And you don't have the right to disrespect the mother of my kids. And so it's been three years since I've spoken to mum. You three, know, three today, years, bro. And still no still, communication? Still no communication. Um, the reason why I distanced myself and people will be like, oh, that's not on. But the reason why I distanced myself is I had to protect my family and I had to t protect my, my own energy. Yeah. Um, and this happened my first year as captain. Yeah. So... I was struggling with injuries to stay on the field. I was struggling with our team coming last. Then I was struggling with my mom constantly putting me down. You know Man. what I mean? So there was times where I was in the car and I was bawling my eyes out because I couldn't walk in. Because I was that person that I'd leave my, my shit and my drama at the door and then I'll be the captain that I need to be for my team. Mm. And I couldn't do it, bro. And I had to get Adam Walsh, who was um, our well-being officer, the missus had to ring him and he'll come out mm. and we'd go get a coffee. He'd um, pick my strength back up and then I'd be able to carry on, bro. But it was like, there was a point where we lost to the Warriors that year at Central Coast mm. and I started bawling my eyes out on the field and everyone's like, oh, it's uh, crocodile tears. Uh, yeah, bro, I remember You know, that. everyone's yeah, like, yeah. it's crocodile tears. Papers He's looking for was, sympathy. Papers were slamming. Yeah, yeah, slamming me, bro. But the reason why that happened i couldn't control it like mm. the reason why it happened was because not once did i express my vulnerability through my own personal life yeah i was giving out advice to everyone else but i wasn't actually living that advice through my own life you know what i mean and my the wife who knew jordan car who knew yeah. um and some of my close mates that were in my circle and adam walsh obviously they were the only ones that knew what was going on in my life. Mm. Um, and Adam Blair come up to me because he was playing for the Warriors. Him and Cody Nicarima came up to me and they go, what's going on, bro? Mm. For the first time I shared what was going on. And again, weight came off my shoulders. Right, goosebumps. Yeah, it came off my shoulders. And I was like, you know what? I got to be more vulnerable within myself to everyone around me and ex share my story because there'll be others that go through it. Mm. You know what I mean? And the reason why I haven't still caught up with mom is because the same thing's going on with the rest of my family bro mm. you know what i mean um she's victimizing herself and um you know she's distanced herself from my whole family the whole family so i'm like she needs space for her to heal i need space for me to heal and eventually in time we might come together and pick up the pieces um but it's sad bro because she missed out on she's missing out on my kids growing up mm. um you know i'm missing out on her being around my kids um and it hurts but at the end of the day like where where do you where do you come out of the shell and just be like you know what i want you in my life mm. you know what i mean i need to give her time to heal brother mate thank you so much for sharing that because 
I, I imagine that's probably not easy to do. No, nah, Espe especially it's not. especially for the first time you do it. And look at you as obviously you're a leader not only in your community in the NRL, like obviously captain your club. You're someone who so many people look up to. Mm. So if you've got someone like yourself sharing your own vulnerabilities, being open to talk about it, then it makes it okay for the rest of us to have these conversations, Absolutely. right? And that, like this is why I started this whole thing, right? So because all my idols and role models growing up were athletes yep. or guys like yourself like it was guys and girls who were not only the best players in the game but also the best people and so whatever they were doing that's what i wanted to be doing yeah. and i'm sure it was similar for yourself 100%. so for you to just come and be so open and so mm. brave and just so vulnerable mm. mate thank you so much because there are so many people out there not just younger crew older guys you know yeah. older guys who who grew up in the time where it was brave and macho to not share your things and carry the burden of your family life or of work life and not talking about it. And then for you to say, as soon as I spoke to Blair and spoke to Cody, like, and, and was vulnerable with them, like, yeah. I actually felt so much better, you know? hundred percent, bro. And it just allowed, like, at the end of the day, right, if I keep this to myself, I'm not helping anyone else. Yeah. And for me, my purpose is to, to help others. And that's why I do the line of work that I do with the youth um, and the Pacifica kids in, in Logan and Ipswich because our cultural backgrounds as Pacific Islanders, um, it's it's very tough, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of people, and I've seen this over the career, I've, I've seen a lot of players that go into footy to help their family financially, mm. but at the end of the day, they really don't want to play footy, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? But we we're always raised to respect the elders and do the best that we can for the family, so they did that. Mm. And so I'm trying to... Be the spokesperson or be the leader for our, our community and our culture um, to, to break those barriers, man. Mm. To sometimes stand up for yourself and be like, this is what I want to do. Yeah, I don't want to go down that pathway. I want to do this and this is my passion. Um, and I try and create that space for the, those kids to open their eyes and see the potential that they have for themselves. And not in a disrespectful of way course. to our, our cultures and, and what's been laid down before us, mm. but I just want our people to live their fullest life and not have any regrets when they get older. Yeah. Um, and I, I've seen so many of my friends that were the best footy players in the world. Yeah. Far better than I ever was. Um, and they went down the other pathway because, mm. you know, it was easy. It was more comfortable. Um, and it was um, a safe option. You know what I mean? What, is, um, what did home life look like throughout that time when you were captaining the Bronx, you were going through injury, you were trying to get on the field, you are balancing all this stuff with your mum. How did you go going back home and separating that? Was there times of like stressed or oh, short or like, and I don't, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I want to like know what actually happened. Was there, was there times where it became too much at home or is, you know? Heaps. Yeah. Heaps, man. Because, you know what I mean? I had the club, the weight of the club on my shoulders, bro. And like I said before, the only way I knew to lead was through my actions. But I wasn't able to action anything because I wasn't on the field. So at that time, we had Paddy Carrigan leading our club. Mm. Young, who was young. a young, yeah. young dude that just honestly debuted the year before. Natural leader. Natural leader. Young man. But to lead uh, the biggest sporting brand in the, in the, in the whole of Australia... That's huge expectations, you know what I mean? Mm. Our whole team across the field, apart from myself, Darius, and uh, there's myself, Darius, Milford, and Oatsy. Mm. We were the only ones that played more than 100 games. Wow. The rest were under 20. Yeah. You know what I mean? Under 20 games, bro. Mm. And these boys had to go out and compete in uh, a bubble where we had no crowds. We were isolated from family and friends and through all COVID, that. Through COVID, yeah. Through COVID. So it was the hardest, bro. And I really struggled, bro. Mm. I really, really struggled. Um, there was days where I didn't want to go to training because yeah. like, I was constantly dealing with my own family issues. Um, and like I had to block my mum from my phone. You know what I mean? I had to block her number so I wasn't getting messages um, you know, from her. I wasn't getting phone calls from her because every time I seen one, bro, I was like melting. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I was trying to protect my energy. And so every day was a struggle for myself. Yeah. Um, and I'm very fortunate that the missus was there to pick, 
pick up the pieces where where she could. Um, Jordy was constantly ch checking in on me mm -hmm. while she was checking in on me. Yeah. Um, but it wasn't easy. Yeah. It wasn't easy, and nothing in life is. And that's it's it's quick to see the end product of what people do. Yeah. Whether it's their businesses, their successful life, and they go, "I want that." Mm. But they don't understand the the struggles and the pain that you sometimes got to, or a lot of us have to go through. Yeah. And for me, it was some some dark days, bro. It was a lot of dark days. Looking back and reflecting, do you take away any tools or anything? Like, what do you do to keep your mental fit now? Is it it's training, like going in the water? Like, do you have any tools that you lean on when you're going through tough times at the moment? Yeah, exercise is my number one form of self love and self care. Yeah. Um, so making sure that I get that workout in because it makes me feel good. Yeah. Um, but then also, um, you know, music's a, a meditation thing for me. Okay. Um, so I love to listen to music and mellow out when he's, I'm stressful. He's singing as bro. well. He's singing as well. Oh, yeah, only in the car, bro. Yeah. Only in the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I've been caught a couple of times from people driving past <laughs> and I just own it. I'm like, yo, let's yo. go. <laughs> um, but also, you know, constantly chatting with my friends. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, it's it's always been a, a huge outlet for myself. Um, the work that I, I do with the kids gives me so much purpose that it allows me to sometimes um, reflect on my own life. Yeah. And when I hear their stories and some of the upbringings that they're going through, man, I'm just like, it makes me reflect on the things that I am grateful for within my life. Yeah. But also because I'm helping them, I walk away with this thing that like, Money can't buy that, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I try to structure my life in terms of what I do in the gym and what I do in my in my workplace with the Broncos that it gives me so much purpose that I'm trying to help and steer them so that they don't make the same mistakes that I did. Yeah. You know, and they're better for it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the biggest one for me, whenever I'm struggling, bro, is to pick up the phone and call my mates check in on my that. mates yeah. um, because it allows myself to share some of the stuff that I'm going through. Um, I don't pick up a phone and have a script on what I'm going to be talking about. Mm. I just check in on them, see how they're going. And I always feel good after that. And when you're vulnerable, they're more likely to be vulnerable with you as well, right? The, it like, it um, opens that door of communication yeah. where it's just like, well, oh, well, if Lex is, or, like, is happy to talk to me, then I guess like, yeah, I guess I'm going yeah. through some stuff as well. And that was the biggest learning curve out of the, all of that darkness that I went through was that the more I shared, the more I realized I wasn't a, alone. Because mm. I always felt I was alone. Mm. I was secluded. And I didn't want to be around people. Mm. But when I shared that with my team, um, you know, they actually came out too. Um, and that was the best part of being the Brisbane Broncos captain. Mm. Even though we got the wooden spoon and we come last, mm. I was able to be a mentor for these boys. Yep. You know what I mean? And now it's no surprise that they're succeeding. Look at the success what they're, they're having doing, now, bro. 100%. There was no surprise for me because I seen the struggles that not, no one else seen. Yeah. I seen them crying in the sheds. Mm. I seen them come in from a Monday and I go, how are you doing? They go, yo, I'm good. And I go, I know you're not good. Mm. We just got pumped by 40 points. You had a bad game. So I know damn well you're not good, bro. So talk to me. Mm. And we'll just sit in the ice bath or we'll sit in the in the sauna and, the, and we'll talk about life, bro. And that was the greatest thing is, that I could take out of those two years as being a captain was to be there for my mates. Be there for them for them, and be the listening ear that they needed. Get a coffee when we could, bro. Because when they express their vulnerability, I've seen their performance start to come back up. Yeah, okay. I, I seen because they didn't have to worry about that anymore. You yeah. know what I mean? They were able to let that that weight off their shoulder and they were able to focus on what their job was as a player on how, the field. How wild is that? That like that old school mentality of like shutting everything down, not talking about it. But then on the flip side, vulnerability acts to, like actually leads to a strength and actually leads to playing good performance. Like Caelan sure. Ponga came on the podcast the other day and he said the exact same thing. Mm. He said as soon as like every Monday in preseason, they would sit down and one of the boys would get up and talk about their story, about what they were going through, maybe their mm. background. And, yep. and they would get to know a little bit more about the player. 
and it was a really safe place and, and they've cre they created that space intentionally. Yeah. And Caitlin was like, I love hearing those stories. Like personally, like, I really love hearing those stories, but it actually allowed me to be closer with the boys. It allowed yeah. me to perform better on the field because I've got my mates back. For sure. For yeah. sure, bro. There was one there was one thing that we did um, at the Bronx and it was called the Triple H yep. thing. So everyone had to do it. And each week would get like three or four boys and they go up. And the Triple H was you had to exp uh, share a highlight mm. of your career or your life, um, a hero, who's your hero. Mm. And the last one was hardship. Yeah, You know what I mean? And that was the first time that I spoke to my team about the hardship that I was going through. And everyone just came and embraced me, bro. I bore my eyes out. It was hard, bro. It was hard to do it. But um, it allowed the boys to connect on a more deeper level. It allowed them to understand what, or all of us to understand what was going on in each other's lives. And the more, and like when we did that, we were like, wow, we got a powerful team here. Mm. And then once we started to come align, we were all checking in on each other because we knew everyone's stories. We knew he who everyone's heroes were. Yeah. Um, we started to come as a team. And the year that I retired, the boys were already on the up. Yeah. Um, and, you know, having Adam Reynolds come in was just amazing. Mm. Amazing. Because his leadership as a halfback is something that we were lacking. Mm. Um, you know what I mean? And it, it would have been amazing to play one more year with him. Um, but, you know, I'm just so proud of how far those boys have come because of the the trenches that we were in together. You know what I mean? And now you look at Reese Walsh, you look at Paddy Carrigan. These are stars of the game right now. Mm. Um, and, you know, they put that hard work into it and they worked on themselves through those hardships. Um, and I couldn't be proud. And that's why I love having the boys at the at the gym mm. um, because, you know, we've got that bond forever. Yeah, We will always have that bond forever because we've, we've been through the trenches with each other and we've expressed vulnerability together and, um, you know, that's, I guess, a big thing that I want people to take out of, um, out of life is that there's no rainbows and butterflies. Mm. Life is a journey and life is hard. And sometimes we have to put, put our big boy pants on and swallow our, our pill, not physically, but like swallow those, those hard lessons that we have to learn in life because it teaches you resilience. It teaches you discipline. Um, and you can't just pick up a textbook and go, yo, I'm resilient. Like mm. you got to really walk through those dark times mm. to be able to get through the other side and understand that at the end of every storm, there's always the sun that comes out. You know what I mean? It might take two years, it might take two months, but that sun's going to eventually come out. And when you come out of it, you're stronger as a person, bro. Brother, I absolutely love where your head's at, bro. <laughs> you, it, mate, man. it's so, it's so impressive and it's so... Not kind of refreshing to be able to talk to someone like yourself who has done so much reflection on this and can articulate it so well. Um, thank you. Mate, thank you so much for sharing everything today. Is there My anything pleasure. that we haven't touched on that you'd that you'd like to that you'd like to talk about before we wrap it up? Um No, I think another another piece of advice for anyone that's listening or watching is um don't be restricted by fear to go out and try things. Um, you would always hear the, the stars of and your heroes say it, man, like Michael Jordan failed thousands of times. Um, and fear really held me back in high school. And that's what I want people to understand is that I'm not perfect myself, even still today. You know, I am stronger than where I was as a, as a high school kid, but I'm still not perfect and I'm still constantly learning and understanding that in order to keep growing as a person you got to fail sometimes you got you got to fail a lot actually um i dove into business without any idea of what we were going to do so i failed in a lot of areas mm. but through failure there's so much more learnings you know what i mean you learn so much more than your your successes um and your wins so don't be afraid to fail go out there and try new things um if you're not happy in the work that you're doing then be willing to take a risk and do the things that you love um, and yeah, just go out there and live life to the fullest. Um, social media can be this huge backlash in terms of perfection, mm. but we all go through our highs and lows and our roller coasters. Um, and if you focus on what's true to you and what your values are, the right people will come around you, bro. 
the right people will help mentor you through life. Um, and you'll start to see a change in your, your mentality too when you hang around the right people um, and your energy systems as well. So pick the people that are, are good for you. Um, pick the people that are right for you and don't change for anyone because there's only one person in this world and that's you. Um, so don't try and be another Keegan Hipgrave. Don't try and be another Alex Glenn. I want you to be the best version of yourself and that's all it is. I fucking love that, mate. Mate, thank you. Thank you again. I, I really enjoyed this conversation. I love being back on the coast and seeing you coming into Legacy. I love having you at mate, Legacy. I love having you on the coast. It's the best. I'm, I'm so proud to be able to call you a mate and you're someone Likewise. who I look up to from 17 years old even now um, while you've had such a successful career at the Bronx. I feel like you're just getting started, brother. And, and I'm excited nice. to see what the next couple of years looks like for you, bro. So thank you. Thank you so much, bro. And as, as I said before, it's an absolute privilege to be on here. Um, again, I love what you're doing too because this space needs more of it, um, especially for men, you know, especially for these teenagers coming through, understanding that, um, you know, it's okay to be vulnerable. That persona of men, Okay, being hard and, um, you know, providing for families when you grow older, like, it is changing. Okay, we still can be men, but we're allowed to cry when we want to cry. And it's okay to cry too. So thanks for creating this space, brother. Thank you, bro. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs>